my first uh, step in how to deal with pride is to first to recognize, right? To recognize and confront in an honest way that you have an issue. I really believe that a, an important first step in any issue that you will ever address in your life is to assess and confront and accept that as an issue. You know, it's so easy to explain things away and to excuse things. But if you're going to ever deal with any issue, the first important step is to recognize that it is an issue and be committed to the change. So my first step is to recognize and honestly, honestly recognize and accept that it is an issue that must be dealt with. And the second important guidance I give you is to ask God for help. You know, in anything that deals with your life, God says, come to me. God says, I love you. It's all over scripture. God says, come to me, come to me and find rest in me. God says, if any mind lacks wisdom, come to me for wisdom. So I want to say that your second key guidance that I give you is to go to God and just really just depend on the help of God. I'm going to share a verse of scripture that I believe that really covers this very, very clearly. It comes from James chapter four, verse six to seven. The first part of that verse says, God resists the man who is proud, right? God resists a man who does not acknowledge that he needs God. God stands against a man who does not recognize that he needs God. But the second part of this verse says, but God gives grace to the humble. A man who says, I need help. I see an issue, but I need help. The Bible says in James chapter four, verses six to seven, God says, I will help you. So the very, the second important step in dealing with pride is to, uh, is to tell God, right? Say, Father, I need your help. And James chapter four, six to seven, says, God gladly will help you because he gives grace. And grace is God's help, God's ability. And I'm telling you that when you have God's ability, no, no matter how serious an issue is, when you have God's ability, you can be assured that with God's ability, you can and you will overcome the issue of pride. I want to say that a, a major issue with pride is having an inflated assessment of oneself, having an inflated opinion or assessment of oneself. And the reason why I'm saying that is that you, oh, you need God, you need the Holy Spirit to really open your eyes, to really see truth the way it really is. Because a man or woman who has an inflated opinion of himself or herself is not grounded in reality. Reality, how something really is, must be grounded in truth. And the Bible says the only one who can help you really see truth is the Holy Spirit. One of the names of the Holy Spirit, he's the spirit of truth. He's a spirit that opens your eyes to see things the way they really are. It is so easy to fall into a sense of false reality, especially if there are things that you may not feel that you are pleased with in yourself. But God says, come to me, come to me, come to me. And when you go to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will open your eyes to see things the way they really are. And why is what I'm saying important? In yourself, by yourself, you will never find anything that's perfect, right? But if, if you ask the Holy Spirit for help, he will help you see yourself in God. The Bible says that the word of God is given to us to understand who God is and who we are in God was created in the image of God and the likeness of God. One of the awesome things the Holy Spirit does, he opens your eyes to see who you really are in God. Oftentimes when you are looking at your yourself, even the highest thought you have of yourself can never be compared to who God says you are. And it takes the Holy Spirit to open your eyes to really see effectively see and clearly see who you are in God. Why is what I'm saying important? When you look at yourself, you will see, you could see yourself apart from God. When the Holy Spirit opens your eyes to see, he will help you see yourself in God. You know, when a man sees himself in God, even if you have weaknesses, 
when you when the holy spirit shows you who you are in god those weaknesses become irrelevant because when the holy spirit opens your eyes to see who you are in god what he will show you is god's ability what he will show you is god is god's power and god's glory because what god has done in you if you have given your heart to jesus god has come to live in your heart he's given you a new heart a new life and what the holy spirit will do he'll help you see the real you in god in christ a man who is proud has a false sense of reality he sees himself in himself he sees himself in his in, in his unreal sense of reality but when a man really comes to the holy spirit and asks for help in dealing with pride the holy spirit will now open your eyes to see who you really are in God. And my friend, when you really see who you are in God, you will not need to inflict anything about yourself because the, who you are in God is complete. The Bible says that you are complete in Christ. The Bible says that God is your strength. The Bible says Christ has been made unto you wisdom. So everything and anything that you lack, you have it in Christ. And a man who is proud, and that's why pride must be dealt with. Pride tries to see oneself apart from God. But when a man is really humble, he begins to accept who he really is in God. A man who is, is uh, humble comes to God and says, show me who I am and help me see myself in you. It takes a humble man. It takes a humble man to submit to God's word, to receive God's word, and to bring himself under the, the submission and the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the Bible says, God resists a man who is proud. A man who is proud arrogates himself above the knowledge of God. A man who is proud arrogates himself beyond God's help. A man who is proud tells God, I don't need you. So if you're gonna deal with pride, a, an important, place to begin is to say, God, I need you. God, I need you to show me who I am. God, I need to see who I am, but in you. A man who is going to be helped in dealing with pride will say, Father, help me see myself in you. Help me see all your word tells me I am. And a man who's going to um, deal with pride must come to God for help. And I want to say that a major job that the Holy Spirit has is to help you. He's called your helper, right? He's the one who helps you understand. He brings you understanding. So when you pray and ask him for help, he will reveal who you are in Christ. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, you can never even really know who God is because God is a spirit. And that's why the Bible says that to know God requires faith. You don't see God with your two eyes. You see God uh, with the eye of faith. You just believe what the Bible says about him. You believe who he is in his word and you trust who he is. And the Holy Spirit helps you see and understand who God is through his word. He also helps you see who you are in God's word. And he helps you understand how to embrace who God is in your life. He also helps you embrace who you are in God. And I'm telling you an awesome place to get to is when you are so satisfied with who you are in God. You know, when you get to see who you really are in God, you will have no reason to overcompensate. Because when the Holy Spirit shows you the greatness of God, there will be no reason to inflate. How can you inflate God? God is greater than great, bigger than big. And when you begin to see the bigness of God, the greatness of God, and the Holy Spirit reveals who you are in God, you will see that who you are in God is beautiful. Who you are in God is great because what God does, he, he gives you his life. He gives you his character, his nature. And, they, and when you receive who God is, because the Bible says when a man gets born again, when he receives Jesus into his heart, he has a new life and your new life comes from God. And when you begin to see who you really are in Christ, when you really see how perfect you are in Christ, you'll realize that you can rest and rest and just enjoy who you are in Christ. And a man who sees who he is in Christ will not walk in pride. 
The man who walks in pride does not know who he is. You'll always find that a man or woman who struggles with pride does not know who he is or who she is. A man who deals with pride has a, an issue with identity. And that's why every Christian must deal with identity issues. Your identity must be grounded in who you are in Christ. Until your identity is grounded and secure in who you are in Christ, you will always have to deal with pride. A man who is proud sees himself apart from God. God did not create any of us to survive or to exist or thrive apart from him. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11, God put eternity in the heart of man. In the heart of every man, God put a yearning for every man to, 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 to come to know him, him as God, and also come to find themselves in God. So if you're going to deal with pride, the Holy Spirit will have to open your eyes to see who God is and also help you see yourself in God. And I gave you James chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. God resists a man who is proud, but God gives grace. God always helps a man who comes to God for help. But the second step in dealing with pride, go to God for help and ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And he will help you. He will open your eyes to see who you really are. He will open your eyes to see who God really is. He'll bring you to a place where you are so grounded in this new life that you have in Christ. And he will help you get rooted, be secure in Christ. And when you're secure in Christ, when your identity is secure in Christ, you will have a solid foundation that defines who you are. When you know who you are in Christ, you will not have to compensate with anything external. A man who still needs to be defined by his accomplishments has not really seen God in his fullness. When you see yourself in the fullness in God, you will not need to be compensated. You will not need to compensate with your job, your titles, your relationships, or your material goods. Because you will find out that in Christ, Christ is your sufficient one. Christ is more than enough. And your real nature, your real life is grounded in Christ. And the second guidance I give you in dealing with pride is that you must meditate on the word of God. For the Christian, the Bible says a Christian, a child of God, a child of God must live by the word of God. You know that the Bible tells you, uh, tells us in to meditate on the word of God day and night. To meditate means to ponder on, to think on, to let the word of God fill your mind, your heart, to fill your heart. And when you meditate and you study God's word, I really believe that what the Word of God does, it really builds you up. And really what the Word of God now does, it helps you be established in truth. The Bible calls the Word of God the Word, the word of truth. When you now use God's Word and study God's Word, you will now ground who you are in truth. Remember I said that a man who is proud, he has an inflated sense of who he is. He has an unreal sense of, he has a false sense of who he is based on, on falsehood. Who he is is grounded in what he has, his titles, his, his jobs, and he's, it's always grounded by external things. A man who is proud will need to compensate with external things. Well, a man who now walks away from pride and now lives a humble life will ground himself on the word of God. The Bible tells us as Christians that the Bible is given to us to know who we are. The Bible also is given to us to be built up by God's word, right? And a man who is going to deal with pride must be grounded in God's word. He must find himself from God's word. And remember in my second guidance, I said the Holy Spirit will help you, but the Holy Spirit will help you with his word. God will never work with you apart from his word. The Holy Spirit will never help you apart from his word. So if you're going to really deal with pride at the root, you're going to have to have a commitment to study God's word 
and meditate on God's word. Find out scriptures that talk about humility. Find out scriptures that talk about the character and the nature of Christ. The book of Philippians tells you to have the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is a, is a mind that is, is centered on, on, on truth, right? The mind of Christ is a, man, is, is a mind that's centered on what the Father says, right? And that's why you must your mind must be like Christ. The Bible says that he did not think of it robbery to be equal with God, but he humbled himself. He humbled himself and obeyed the Father. The Bible tells us to have the same attitude that Christ had. So I've given you three guidance. And my fourth guidance is that even if you don't see the change overnight, because sometimes when you're trying to address areas with the issues, you may not see the full change happen overnight, but be committed. Be committed to see this change and this issue of pride dealt with. If you are committed, to addressing pride, God will help you. My fourth God is not to give up, be committed. Be committed with the help of the Holy Spirit that whatever it takes, be committed to the process of change. And sometimes change doesn't happen overnight. But my fourth important guidance to you is don't give up, be committed to the process of change. Change will require you actively being involved in the process with the help of the Holy Spirit it will be it will require you being actively committed to doing the things the holy spirit will tell you to do remember i said oh, well, that when you um want to change you're gonna have to ask the holy spirit for help he may show you things to change he may show you things to stop doing he may show you verses of scripture as you're studying to to spend time studying deeper so whatever he tells you to do, the Holy Spirit tells you to do, be committed to doing it and don't give up. Be committed to a new way of thinking, right? Remember I said a man who is proud, his thoughts are fixated on himself. While a man who is humble has a different way of thinking. A man who is humble has a different mindset, not just, not just that he thinks differently. He has a different way of thinking. He has a different way of looking at life, right? I also believe that walking in humility will require you speaking a different way. A man who is proud only talks about himself. If he does anything good, he only attributes all the goodness to him. A man who's humble, while he recognizes and, ce and celebrates his accomplishments, a man who's humble will recognize that all of the ability came from God. If you're gonna be committed to changing, right? And growing in humility, it will require a commitment to a different way of speaking, right? And another thing you'll remember, a life that's committed to changing uh, and moving away from pride will, will require a different way of living. A man who is proud always wants to push himself ahead of others. A man who is proud always wants to push others away. He, he sees himself better than others. Well, be committed to a different way of looking, not just at yourself and God, but other people. A man who is proud will not see that other people are, are good or will not even see that other people are just as good. He will only, he will, he will only believe that the, all of the goodness is all about him. But a man who is humble will recognize the good in others. A man who is humble will celebrate others, will be able to applaud others, right? And I, know, I really believe that a man who will live a life of humility will be committed to live according to God's word. A man who is proud will not even think that he needs to submit to God's word. But a man who is humble will recognize the authority of God's word. A man who is humble will recognize and submit to the authority of God's word. Remember I said that God resists a man who is proud. Because a man who is proud does not think he needs God, does not believe he needs God. But a man who is, is humble, a man committed to living a life of humility, will recognize the authority of the word of God, will submit to the authority of the word of God. I will submit to a lifestyle of the Word of God. I actually post some, some tools and tips to help you. And I also ask that if you've not watched the first part of this video, I also provide the first part of this video for you to watch. I really believe it's important to watch the two-part series on pride. 
I want to wish you a blessed day and stay strong in the Lord. God bless you.